without wasting time, I have a, um, I want to paraphrase um, 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 an abstract written by uh, Mrs. Juliet Adako Egese on the topic, understanding the African development strategies, the, Niger the Nigerian development strategies as a focus. So um, this is a work um, she did and uh, because um, um, she was unable to um, acquire the, um, um, the visa and um, I want to assist her do the work. So uh, in abstract six, um, uh, since independent, independence, African states has been making a strong effort to develop their countries and economics through different strategies, which comprises both uh, internally uh, influence strategies and home growth method for of development. In Nigeria, uh, these uh, foreign uh, initiated strategies has come mainly from international monetary fund like IMF, uh, World Bank, um, United States agencies for international development, USDAID, uh, European Union, um, etc. Uh, she further stated that the strategies introduced to the Nigeria by these foreign bodies has not been wholly proven beneficial to the country's economies and her people. And for the often, the little gain um, uh, they were able to uh, abstract from that, uh, this issue or this effort to the home countries and economies of these foreign agencies uh, on the part of home grow development or strategies, the states and her citizens has initiated some of the border on indigenous community um, development. Like what we have, the National Development Citizens um, Empowerment Programs, and lately, um, the, uh, um, the vested interest on entrepreneurship, on educations and training, like we can also uh, testify within the contemporary and the Nigeria in particular. Uh, that is a particular um, um, move of um, entrepreneurship, uh, which we also discover there is no much, much um, gain and um, more interest in the oil uh, booming nation since having seen that most countries have, have been able to identify oil in that state. So there is every need for us to reject our uh, refocus, our, our focus, our directives in entrepreneurship and, and whatnot. The challenge so far in, in this coordination is the lack of political will among our leaders and political class and uh, in, in, in interestable corruptions that pervade the system. However, uh, he, he started, uh, he, her work says her main purpose of these conference papers is to highlight and examine these ver uh, various development strategies, both externally, uh, in do's and home grow, with a view to understanding their efforts on our development efforts in Nigeria to proper uh, ways in checkmating the various challenges that they have posed to our uh, national development tribes and capacity building. Um, these are uh, most of the facts which he, she highlighted on these basics. And having said so, I, I want to rest my case. Uh, thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, you have taken very little time, so yeah. you actually have... Uh, uh, I'm just standing in for Notri Genigeme Uchechi and Notri Umana Genigeme. The topic is, or the title of their work is Textiles and Fashion for Identity, a Narrative of Cultural Development in the Niger Delta of Nigeria. Let me just take the uh, abstract. Textiles and fashion make up part of socially transmitted uh, behaviors and patterns along with arts, arts, traits, uh, mode of uh, expression with other products of human work and thoughts which culmin culminates into cultural development. Textiles and fashion in the Niger Delta region which dates back to prehistoric times add to the sum total of ways of living which has played a, a mega role as a mode of uh, tribal identity and, uh, and has been a useful tool in bridging cultural, social 
and political divide. The history, beliefs, cultures, status, and aspirations of the people are readily interpreted by what they wear. The various colors, styles, patterns, and their place in cultural development and identity propagation. Can, can, an identity uh, propagation cannot be overemphasized. Uh, Thus, this paper delves into the history, use of textiles, and fashion in the Niger Delta, current trends and developments within the sector with the view to discovering how it has contributed to cultural development in the Niger Delta region in Nigeria. Okay. And she went ahead to introduce which area is the Niger Delta region in uh, Nigeria, and that this area constitutes of mainly, uh, initially, three or uh, six states, which are Cross River State, Delta, Akwaibum, Bayelsa, Rivers, and Edo, Edo State. And then uh, some other states were now added Abia, uh, Imo, and Ondo states were now added. You know, because we cannot have the PowerPoint, it has a map of Nigeria with those areas. Then identity and dress are intimately linked. According to uh, Twig, uh, 2009, averts that, that clothes display, express, and shape identity. And then she goes again to say that textile meets the need of society for dress, for shelter, for identity, for communication, for furnishing, and its use thereof reveals much about the wearer's identity. So textiles can easily tell the identity of the person that is wearing this uh, uh, clothing and so on. Then she goes ahead to pick some uh, textile materials and textile designs from these Niger Delta region. Unfortunately, we cannot see most of these pictures. The Blangidi was woven in traditional society like the Nembe, Kalebari, Boni, and Okrika as mask, as mark of identity. Uh, uh, indication of a person's age, gender, and marital status. There are some materials that can be worn and is one to identify the person's age. It's a, a group of people in an age group that wear that particular material. Then sometimes uh, married, like in the fake society too, they, uh, uh, there's, there's a difference between the addressing the elderly people and the younger people. So textiles and fashion can easily identify a people, maybe by their age, by their gender, by their marital status, and uh, origin, religion, social status, and occupation. Okay. There are most other things here are about the visuals. She had put in visuals of different uh, uh, clothings and what they uh, signify and what they bring out. Thank you. But I prepared the paper, so I'm going to present even without that. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Awoshika Bridget Itunu. I am from Adeyemi College of Education, Undu, Nigeria. I'm a specialist home economics with bias towards textiles and clothing. The title of my paper is Entrepreneurial Development for Asho of Weavers for Self-Sustenance and Cultural Sustainability in Southwestern Nigeria. Can you imagine a situation where somebody will enter this room without clothing? What, what, what's going to be your impression of that person? If somebody just opens, opens the door and comes in, 
bear. I'm sure you will start thinking of, am I going to hide under the table? Am I going to take my exit through the other door? So this is to show that clothing is very important to the existence and acceptability of anybody in any group of human beings. As far back as 1985, the International Organization of Consumers Union had a position that there are four basic needs for an individual to be seen as whole, ill, hearty, and okay. And these needs are, one, food. If you don't eat, well, people who go on hunger strike, they'll be in the best position to tell their stories. The second one is clothing, adequate functional clothing for the activities that you are into. That is an aspect that led to this research. Another aspect that led to this research is the aspect of culture, cultural sustainability. As an entrepreneur myself, entrepreneurial development, then poverty alleviation. Ashof simply means clothing that is woven on the local loom. Ofi is a Yoruba name for a local loom. And the loom is the apparatus used to weave clothing. So Asho is clothing, Ofi is loom. So the weavers are the people who operate the local loom to produce local textile, which we call Asho Ofi. And this is limited peculiarly to Yoruba, Nigeria. These people are men and women spread across the spheres of Yoruba land. Particularly, this study worked with Ovi weavers in Isain and Oyo. Those of us from that axis in Nigeria, there is a song you say, Moron Mola Shaw is saying you who show. Aron Mola Shaw is saying you who show. I shot him a roll of a This is a song usually sung to show respect and actually exhibit the dexterity of Isaiah people in the weaving of Asha Ufi. I think the best Asha Ufi will be woven in Isaiah as I speak with you today. And ha being on the same axis with them is the Oyo people. The two of them are in Oyo states, southwestern Nigeria. It's like Asha Ufi weaving. It's a traditional skill which is transferred from generation to generation. But a look into the contemporary world shows that Ashofi seems to be losing its cultural value. And more importantly, it seems to be losing the hope of its sustainability in the fashion market. Why? We find out that the youth who are the drivers of fashion or any other thing, the youth borg, makes people to learn a lot of things from the youth. So whatever the youth accepts will get spread into families, into immediate community and the society at large. And the moment the youth refuses a particular either style of clothing, either way or a particular way of eating, even furniture items, before you know it, because they outnumber the adults, those items will also be rejected. So this study looked into the society and found that as much as our youth will want to use the African print, they will want to wear batik, they want to wear polyesters and acrylic fabrics to make their skirts, their mini gowns and what have you. We don't see them using Asha Ufi. And a study carried by, out by Awoshika in 2008 compared the China denim, the jean that we all wear about, with Asha Ufi in terms of attributes, of strength, and wearability, and found out that the Asha Ufi would even outlive the denim if properly handled and maintained in use. Those of us who are from the Yoruba speaking part of Nigeria, you can still look into the wardrobe and look at the Asha Ufi that was used by your grandparents, which was bequeathed on your parents. Your parents have bequeathed on you. Some of them you have given to your children, and they are still as strong as they were at the original time. So that study of Asho, uh, Awoshika 2008 confirmed that the Asho Ufi can actually be sustained in usage. But the problem we have with it are, one, the EU of narrowness. It is usually produced in narrow strips. There is also EU with the weight is so thick 
in texture and so heavy to wear. And because of this, the study carried out a kind of survey, dressmakers will tell you it will break needle. It will take a long time to sew the narrow strips together before they can get a very wide width from which they can cut pattern pieces used for clothing. And because of that, they will charge exorbitant prices on whoever wants to make clothing from the actual face strips. And our children, the girls, the youth will tell you, it's so heavy. The last time I tried to wear it when my sister was getting married, oh, I was sweating like a toad and this and that. If I ever wear it to the lecture room in the universities where we carried out the study, ah, they will ask me what is happening. Is today my grandfather's burial, this and that. So all these negative attributes of narrowness, of heavy weight, and, uh, and the issue of uh, monotonous design are uh, working against the usage of Ashofi by their use. So what the study set out to do was a, uh, we de I developed a hypothesis that we want to see the main responses between male and female weavers because they are the ones to produce Ashofi. So let us see if there will be differences in their main responses as to the operation of the loom. The study went ahead to make an expansion on the loom to the point that instead of the 15 centimeters, which is seven inches that is now produced, we could produce a shelf that is as wide as 30 inches, which is 75, 60, using the wide loom. That's the name of the loom. Now, instead of the narrow loom, a wide loom was designed and perf um, I mean, it was operated and perfected so that weavers could work on the loom. After that, what we found out was that in the traditional weaving method, they will use as many as six strands of thread wind together using local adhesive, the starch. So that even when the three, uh, six strands are wound together, they become so thick, then the weave count could be three, four. At the end of the day, it will result in very thick textured fabric that will not be comfortable for people to use for daily clothing. So, what was done was to reduce the number of strands. I used two. I did not use any uh, filling. The starch was not used. I only soaked in water to make it moistened for easy manipulation on the loom. And so the loom was threaded and weaving was done. And at the end of the day, it was possible. On my instructions, the weavers used the yarns. The yarns were also pretreated. I don't want to belabor you with those ones that are technical. They were pretreated to make sure that the colors don't run when the clothings are in use. So after all this has been done, the weavers were told, now thread, now weave, now do the jacking, and when the whole thing were pulled out. And we found that it was possible. We had a control which in involved the use of the number of strands that they were using and the number of counts that they were using before this research, and it was weighed. And the research found out that one meter of the control, which weighed 2.8 kilograms, compared to the new design, which weighed 800 grams. So that showed that we've been able to achieve the EU of, uh, the achieve the objective of having lighter weight ashore fee. The, Possibility of designing wider loom and putting it to use had helped us to achieve the uh, objective of having wider width ashore fee. And because it is now lighter in weight and it is wider in width, dressmakers have no reason whatsoever to charge exorbitantly when they are sewing. And the design on the new ashore fee was done using CAD, computer aided design such that those irregular stripes and checks that were found in the traditional Ashofi were not available in this ones. We made the signs, there is a design I produced using the Corel Draw. There is one that was even a default on the computer called the Easter Purple. That one was a balanced check with stripes. So when these were produced, we gave them out to the youth. We went back to the uni where the survey was carried out. Come and look at this. Uh, this cannot be a show fee. Uh, this cannot be a show fee. No, no, no. So the objective was also achieved. Now back to the weavers, whom we wanted to compare the main responses between male and female. We now said, okay, there was an interview schedule that was used on them. 
Tell us you have been using the narrow loom and now you have used the wide loom. Tell us your feelings, your reactions, your perception about the operations of the narrow loom and the wide loom. And they scored. Very okay, four. Just okay, three. Not okay, two. Terribly bad, one. So this were used and later the data was subjected to inferential statistics using the t-test. And what they tested for were innovativeness of the wide loom, cultural values. The cultural values in, or, in the original, the traditional show, were, were they still retained in the new one? Do you think this new method will allow you to mass produce so that your issue of poverty can be reduced? If you mass produce, there will be more people coming to buy. And now, if you must produce, do you think that you have the clientele that will buy? And we found that they were all, all acceptable to the people. And on this basis, we recommended that government should have textile villages in every local government area. Let us start from the Yoruba region where this uh, fabric is domiciled. Let's have a weaving center. Let us embed weaving into the curriculum at the primary, the secondary, junior secondary, and the senior secondary. You will see primary school children, they will take threads. All these are synthetic threads. They start to make something like belt. That is a very uh, b the, a good beginning for weaving. So if a child has what we call special aptitude for weaving, and he has the opportunity through the curriculum to you know, grow along that line, you could find many weavers in the contemporary time. And what they will be doing will be things that will help us to sustain our culture, to improve on the economy of our weavers, and to help the fashion industry to sustain. We are looking forward to a situation where there are going to be <coughs> very positive competition, competition between the denim and our own Ashofi, because we too are looking forward to the incorporation of Ashofi clothing into the Agua project. Thank you very much. From Yoruba, share more to my day, Jumo. Big Bubu Wak, pay, Tambani or Jock, pay or Jock Co. Eh? Pay a say, Wak, pay a say, Wak Co. Ah, dee. So, oh, you are dick pay? S. I dick pay co. That's the study. That's the me. Like you say, I did Jumo. That is, oh, you wak pay? I dick pay co. Is, is a dialect name from Mundo. Good morning, everybody. My name is Adekweko Evelyn on Motunde. See me. You don't need to place. You can't misplace me. Yes or no? You know I'm from the Yoruba tribe. Yes or no? Because of my outfit, especially the way I've thrown the Iborun. We call this Iborun on my shoulder. If you are from Nigeria, an Igbo woman will not do it this way. An Hausa woman will not do it this way. They will, but there is a difference. If you are from that axis, you will know that I'm from the Yoruba race. So my paper looks at the title is Preserving, Renovating Textile Artifacts for Sustainable Textile Development in Yoruba Land, a, para, a panorama of some indigenous woven fabric. What I have on me is an indigenous woven fabric. What I'm wearing, this is a woven fabric. This is a contemporary one. I decided to wear the two so you can draw the difference. The last presenter, I, I, I will start where she stopped. My own paper is focusing on a subgroup, the Ondos and the Owos. It's a known fact that the use of Ashoki has dwindled. There's no gainsay about that. There's there's no way you will brand it in contemporary times. The use has gone down. But there is a small group, and, the, and my paper is focusing on that small group, the Ondos and the Owos. If you are from that axis, they still use the old, old type. I'm having one. This is Alari. We have Alari. We have Sonya. We have Etu. We have Petuje. These are indigenous Asha case. 
not the ones that the contemporary brides will use, but the ones that my grandmother used when she was a bride, that my great-great-grandfather used when he was a chief. Those are the indigenous ones. What I'm putting on, you can see it has hole. But you know, though, this is trail. This is age. Because in that, within that subgroup, the older the fabric, the greater premium, financial premium, cultural premium, placed on it. Now you can see my own. I, I didn't buy it new. I bought it as used ones. Because nobody can produce this. It has holes on it. Some are worse. Yet a piece like this can be sold for 150,000 naira. She's from that place. A piece like this can still be sold for 150,000 naira in Ondo because of the age, because of the cultural premium. These people now want to find out why this attachment. It is true it's dindling in other Yoruba communities, but with your words and the Ondos, I don't know when it will fade off. So the researcher, okay, the presenter decided to look at why this attachment. Then this, this subgroup that this paper focused on, he said, pity my laptop is not yet, the pictures are there, but I believe in the final publication. We, be, you, we will have access to the paper by the special grace of God. The own those, they don't only acquire these old fabrics. They have even, they have the technology of keeping it. That's the why the, the, the title is say preserving and renovating. Now they preserve what they have. Look at my Iboru, it has hole. If I, by the grace of, if I come in two years time, you may not know this particular. It may, it may be even, it will appear better than what you are seeing today. Because there are some old women. I will take it to them. They will patch it up. Then they will refurbish it. So this paper is on refurbishing. What do they refurbish? How do they refurbish? How do they store it? How is it that three generations can use a particular piece? And the, the, more, the older the fabric, the, the, the more expensive. Then there's another thing. If you are from that place, there is no family. No matter how poor, at least they will have one or two. You can't say, I'm, I'm a chief, and you can't say, I'm a slave. Even that slave will have something, maybe from the third generation. When occasion calls, they will still use it. So now the paper focuses on what? The renovating. What I'm having now is a Larry. Because of the distance, I can't bring different shades of a Larry. But now, this one can be repainted and make the color deeper. It's not going to be immersed into the dye. But we call it Tito. Yeah. This paper talks about how you can do it. The method used by the presenter is just a, you know, survey design, research design. Because there are not even many. So how many people do you want to interview? It was an experimental research. I was personally involved. Because people that can do it, they are the elderly ones. 60, 70 years and above. And we all, the reasons are not far-fetched. The youth, they don't have the patience. But what do we now do to retain it? Because I still believe no matter the Western touch, our culture is still our culture. That I cannot imagine myself, you know, and I believe a little percentage of the younger generation, we still hold to the old tradition. If they will still hold to the old tradition, then let's sustain it. That leads us to the Tito, the refurbishing of Alari fabric among the Ondo people. There's what we call Aro Alari. It's a simple substance. I asked the, the woman that did it, Buletinra, ah, how did you? I said, oh, no, no, these are imported dyes, but not the one for producing tie and dye. It is sold in the market. No other name than Aro Alari. When they now get it, you dissolve it in water, you boil it for within 15 and 20 minutes, then you spread your faded Alari on the floor or on the ground. You use a foam or a chewing stick 
to now trace the faded parts. After that, you don't iron, you don't, you just take it, you hear dry, then you take it to the bitters. Then when that was done, and now the researcher now thought that there should be something. This design was copied from this. You can come around and touch this. You can come around and touch this. If you look at the colors closely, because in Nondo, you don't alter the colors. When you alter the color, you have altered that fabric. Alari is Alari. Etu is Etu. Petuje is Petuje. Sonyo is Sonyo. So now, I've not altered this color. It's because, because of the age, I can get this tone. Then something close to it. You see, what I'm putting on, look at this place, is exactly this. I've only played on the colors. I've increased this, I've increased this yellow, I've increased the yarns. As she has said, if you thought this is very light, I'm in a contemporary style. Mm -hmm. My girl of 17 will be comfortable wearing this. Even this white lady will be comfortable wearing what I'm wearing. Because it has been perfectly soon. If you look at the wrong side, we have, have the, the researcher, the presenter have married, you know, both tradition and modern. This is the middle ground. That is why in my conclusion, I know my time is running off. Actually, we have a lot of time. Uh, OK, so can I still continue? OK, thank you very much. Because of her uh, now, before I go to the conclusion, it's a pity my, my system is not here. You, can, you know, I've featured a couple. The elderly people. The man will be 90 by next July. And the, the wife will be 80 by January. So they are still alive. You can see them, you know, in this alary. My, my, the former presenter was talking about weight. I've done something close to that. The weight of the agba that the man was wearing, his own outfit, I weighed it was four kilo, four kg. So each time the man is, is moving on, He's adding, he has added 4 kg to his weight. But look at me now. I can be in the plane for 24 hours. I will not know I'm wearing Ashoki. Am I not wearing Ashoki? Yeah. I'm wearing Ashoki, but it has been modified. It has been adapted. It has been brought to conversion, you know, con contemporary style, so that we can sustain it. I also talk about the storage system. There's a particular way this group store their own fabric. Formerly, when my mother, when my grandmother were alive, they would put their clothing in Okeaja. Aja is roof in Yoruba. Then they would have a, you know, a bag made, I think, originally with straw. Then later, maybe with strong fabric, they call it Oke. They would fold it. They would you know, give it to the bitter and store it that way. Then, once in a while, they will bring it down to hear it. That is why, as the first presenter said, a particular fabric can be for 80 years because they, they, were, they were doing regular inspection, special way of storing it. In Ondo, they have two boxes. The wooden one is used by the men, according to the research, and they call it Akpeti, she will understand. And the female, they, they are, they are, their own box is made with metal. They call it Iyati Mbo. In fact, when I heard that name, I said, Mama, give me to my Iyati Mbo. These are, these are special structures where they can keep their fabrics, this woven, uh, woven fabric. And once in a while, when, maybe when they are in summer, when the sun is hot, they will bring it out. Art can for. These were the local ways of preserving it. That is why we that are middle age, at least, we have inherited. And we are sure with this new innovation, the younger, my children, that have, maybe they are 13, 14, they will still wear it because we are, we are sustaining that tradition. That is why all these new innovations, development, according to the theme of this conference, has been brought into Ashoki. That's why somebody like, you know, anybody, a five-year-old will wear this. I have it in, a, in other designs, but I want to be free. If you see the one I saw, it's because of the distance. I saw for men. You will not believe that it was Ashoki. 
And I, you know, the way the researcher had done it, we did it in such a way that we have not tampered with the color, but what she has explained, we have only altered the number of young tanks. And the tension during the weaving process. That was how we were able to achieve it. But in conclusion, there are few, you know, the, 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 the presenter has made few suggestions. More scholar researcher, she endeavored to carry out more studies on the state, uh, sustainability of the Yoruba woven fabric, especially the old ones. It's not enough to fold your hands and say, ah, the use is going down. What are you doing about it? You cannot say your father's house is leaking. You run away. I'm a black woman, and I will remain one forever. I can't say this Texas is better, and I will start to wear bum shorts around the streets. It's not done in our culture. If that one is not done in our culture, then let's look for ways of sustaining our culture. That is their own culture. I'm sure our daughter cannot wear that along the street. Can you tolerate it? No, you can't. Because it is, you know, culture is part of, you know, it's, uh -huh, it's our last. It's not easy to, to break away totally from your culture. If it is not easy, the end this paper, you know, and it, uh, is encouraging scholars. Don't say it has gone down. What do we do to sustain it? Then number two, in addition to relevant skills acquired by youths in textile design, in my local government, there are two skill acquisition centers established by the, maybe on those state government or the local government. They go there to sew. I, you know, these young graduates, they will go there. I'm now soliciting that even this skill should be learned there. You know, some, many of them are jobless. They only go there to sew. If a percentage have been encouraged to learn this, when those mamas are dying, like now I have a bitter. I did a research in 2008, 2007, 2006. It was their father. Maybe you will know. They call them Babala Lupa because you know the way the, the, there is a way we iron, we iron uh, Ashoke. You don't iron, you beat. So, that the man does it that they said if he, if if he, if he does it the, the the cloth will die that is babala lupa so when the man passed on at the age of 100 i encourage the, the children akim and ikejem please don't leave this i think akim is now riding one old bench yes. yes because i encourage him don't leave this crap and everybody, if you get there now, the, the young man, they are making it. So I, I also believe that a percentage of youth, if we also encourage them through all these uh, uh, skill acquisition centers, they will do what? They will learn and they will leave. Number three, I believe we should be ripe enough to have a museum. The day, yeah, the day I was in London, by the, I had an opportunity. I saw this museum, if I, it was because the place was locked. I wanted to rush in because I'm sure African fabrics will be there. Sure. But do we have one in Nigeria? We, they call us Yoruba, Alasha Oke. Where are the Asha Oke? In our different homes. <laughs> in our boxes. There's supposed to be a central house. That when, when they come from Texas, I would say, come to my museum in Ondo. Mm -hmm. Then they will see. Even if the young generation are not using it, it will be kept there for posterity. Ah, they will say, no. In the, in, the 20, in, in the year 1975, my grandmother wore this. It may be 200 years to come, if the world still exists. Then lastly, I put here modification of the old ones. And that's why I decided to wear this for my uh, presentation. That in my own little way, I'm helping to sustain the use of the old actual cube type. Because I've modified this both in, in texture and in style. Thank you for listening. We must uh, thank our... Really, really inspiring. Uh,
uh, very informational uh, presentations they've given us. And since um, all of our presentations actually address uh, visuals, I think it's, it's important for us to see some of these things that uh, uh, we've been talking about. Um, uh, for the sake of those who might not really know some of the issues we've been addressing. Are you trying to put on the screen? Yeah. Uh, let me just start with this. Oh, he's there. I'm sorry. We don't seem to. Uh, it's just is it coming? It's coming. Oh, okay, good. It's just taking his sweet time. So all I did was, uh, um, is the light a little much, or why are we not seeing? <coughs> Uh, we were talking about uh, the loom uh, yeah. the other time, and uh, one of the presenters uh, spoke of the narrow, uh, the, the narrow loom. I don't know which of these presenters did that. Um, but also in our world, I realized that there is a tradition of weaving that's not narrow loom. Yeah. That's actually like this one. Yes. Uh -huh. They don't even use the narrow loom. In our they use more of the broad loom of the broad loom. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another. What, what kind of loom is this? This is the birata. That's the bira. OK, now? My work is not the same as your women. This one's a narrow. Uh, this is, this the is narrow. a narrow loom. That's a narrow the loom. Of the and what, what kind of? Ashoke is this? That should be Etu. Is that? Because of the white the stripes. stripes. Yeah. That, that's the Petuje. Petuje. What makes it Petuje? Okay. <laughs> Can I then say it? Please. So what makes it Petuje is, if you see the real Etu, the real Etu is darker in color. It's a pity because of the distance. I have both Etu and I have, both, and I have Petuje. But Petuje has the lighter checks of light blue, mixed off light blue and the deeper tone of indigo <coughs> but etu is more or less about 90 percent indigo blue that's the difference and now another another peculiar difference between etu and etu is that etu is one color indigo mm -hmm. with depending on the we one 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 but for etu there are stripes and we yeah, are the ones yeah. that and to have no stripes at all. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can find a couple more. That's uh, yeah, those another. Yes, those are under a shirt. Oh. Many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you have for sale, I have. Well, um, I mean, please, I don't really have money to buy, so you need to dash me. Don't worry, I can dash you. But my question is this are there some <laughs> docu documental structure or game from these old attire? What, what does it portray? And what do we tend to gain from this issue? Okay, <laughs> shall I answer you? <laughs> Within the context of what do, mm -hmm. I said one thing in my presentation. I've made studies among them. No matter how poor a family is, it's a cultural heritage to them. <clears throat> like this. If I place it anywhere, the elderly one will say, ah, if I don't even place it anywhere, because there is a cultural prestige attached to it. It's like when you, it's like when you are selling your birthright. Sorry to digress. He's only asked for food. He didn't know that he has exchanged his position. Mm -hmm. Good. I believe each culture has peculiarity and 
and the heritage. You said one thing. What we stand to gain is we will maintain our identity. It's a pity tonight, you know, to the uh, African continent. They are, they are speedily losing their identity. Like now, when I was coming to Texas, I told myself, I will look African also. On, 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 on uh, day before yesterday, I was in Ankara. Yesterday, I was in Ankara. Today, I'm in this. Because you make a difference. Okay. So that is what they stand to gain. <coughs> like now, sorry, sir. I told you that in Yoruba land, they are forsaking yes. the altar. It's only in Ondo, Ondo and Owo. Even in his saying now, because the Ondo people, they are buying. Are you I following me? I'm following It's because they stood by the old time. That's why they have been identified with the old time. So we, we get a lot. And are, are we also uh, kind of inculcating these norms and value system into our uh, younger generation? And are, are you sure? Are, are you sure that this will not go into a state? Good. You know, that I think I, I, I brought the balance in my yes. presentation. This is the old one. This is the new one. Now, there were, I made a research. Secondary school boys and girls were used. I saw a dress like this. They were asking me, how much do you want to sell it? You want to buy? Mm. You are a priest. You are telling me that I should make for you. Mm. And I bet it with you. If I make one for you, I will sell in your community. I may not sell with you, but somebody else will say, is this I like it? Yes. And we buy it. So it's because we have not attempted it. It's because we are folding our hands that this thing is dying. We are not doing anything about it. If something is done, go and wake, wake it up. It's true. You have a question? I want to add. Okay, I want okay. to add a quick comment to what Sister has been trying to say. Um, from a, a purely historical standpoint, I think what your presentation did and what uh, my sister Abushika did was show us that continuity that can actually keep giving. Yes. Because as Africans, we have been probably miseducated or misunderstood in terms of thinking that African history started with the arrival of Europeans. No, no, no. And that is not true. The same thing happened with our culture because in terms of cultural heritage, um, even those people who have managed to put a good discard their culture because they think, oh, it's primitive or backward or whatever, because they're buying into this colonial discourse, have started going back to their origins. Yes. Because they realize that after everything, a, a person without a history or a culture is a lost soul. You really can't function because you, you, you want to adapt to some other person's idea of who you are. You should be able to know who you are. And I think um, cultural heritage is one of those things. It, it, I find this actually quite fascinating because last year, I think one of the topics regarding Africa and the diaspora um, also talked about identity or the making of identity. And I remember presenting a paper, for those of you who know me, I love fashion. And I love African fashion. And I, I, I thought it, 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 it was going to be interesting to combine history and fashion and all the things that I like and food I love to eat. And so I came up with the title of my paper for, for, for last year's conference. Um, what was it? Oh, I am what I eat and where, when it matters. And so if I'm going to an African conference, I make sure that I have my African clothes to wear because that is my identity. And I want to, I want to make a statement that I know who I am. I love being African and I enjoy my heritage. And so it's, it's what most of us are beginning to do. Because I think for young people also, there is that challenge to try and be assimilated as part of the greater culture where they've relocated. But even then, you know, after a couple of years of eating the burgers and wearing the jeans and running around, they start coming back to their community because then they, they get challenged even in their own schools. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And so this, I think, is really fascinating, and I want to thank um, the panelists for doing such a brilliant job in reminding us that, that this is a cause that is worth fighting for. Thank you. Okay. I just want to add a little, hello, Reverend. <clears throat> yeah. You see, those church towns, according to their names, they have symbolic connotations. This one I asked Prof to keep on is the soil, is the one that is beige in color. Mm -hmm. This one is used for burial celebration. This one? Yes. yes. This color, soil. Burial no, no. Is this color or this? This color. color. This is the flowing Agbada like the parachute. Because that's one I bought uh, when I last week. This color be it. This is the sign of... That's one I bought. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no hand here, but it's just color. Yeah, yeah that's a smart that's one. That's a smart one. That's a dance shiki. You see, when they're old, passes on, this is what they use in my area. Everybody from the Tsinin family that comes to pay obeisance will bring this. Iketa. That one will have the edges fringed, so like you have in that strap. Did they wear it or did they pack it? Wait. Children of the deceased and okay. family will wear this. Okay. Yeah. Everybody coming to say, I used to know him. I'm using this to honor him even in death. Like we'll bring this. Okay. That's the one we call Iketa. That one will have the edges fringed. Mm. The Iketa will have all the edges. From here to here will be like this, fringed. Mm. But all children of the dead, Members of the family and their friends that come, this will be the uniform. We'll be going in soil. Mm -hmm. You use this stripe, it's white. Okay. So you wear white lace as a woman and don the wrapper, the oh, headgear, yeah. and the stool. Okay. For the man, he will wear white top, soil trousers, and this parachute like flowing gown. <laughs> parachute. Yes. <laughs> that is for the beige. The other one is the etch. The etu is like Bridget's sleeve. This is the real color of etu. Now, the etu has a symbolic connotation during marriages. When I got married, my grandma packaged my bag because it's part of the. It's the etu is part of the list for engagement that the, the, the bride's family will give to the will be in law's family. These are the things we package in the box. And the connotation is that you are going there, the guinea fowl, that is it. Mm. Add to a lara, you will enjoy comfort will in your marriage. Add to a lara. Add to a lara, it. Mm? Mm. This portion could be darker if we see it in our real life. But I want to use Bridget's sleeve, the solid color portion. So it's add to a lara, the new home you're going into, you'll be comfortable there. You'll be a children in comfort, you will live there in comfort. And apart from, that's why when the bride gets a new to the new home, she dons the etu with the, the, the ruby in you on it. So they all have connotations. The alari, the crimson red one, is the one that is seen as the most valuable. Alari Olori Asho, the king of all fabrics. That's the meaning. That one is done by the king, by the affluent. And when your child is getting married, you don't wear it. You go and wear a large. And this are. I have a question. For is this a Larry? For you, no. Yes, a Larry. Different shades, a Larry, a Larry, a Larry. Chimpanzee is a Larry. This is etu. In fact, this is a traditional etu. Yeah. Navy blue. Mm. These are alaris. All those reds, alari, different shades and tones of alari. This is an alari background with an etu. Like when you are, we put it on when we are getting um, a traditional or marriage issue. Yes. Marriage. It's not usually used for funeral. Okay. Used for marriages. That, that's uh, they are mm -hmm. One of Sanya. You know, in enough issue. Londo. Londo. Yes. Londo. Because there could be people choosing to say, okay, for my wedding, I want to get Sanya. So, what is the significance of the guinea fowl, which you just mentioned? The guinea fowl? Yeah. The name, the Yoruba name is Etu. Okay. When you say something, it is you. Yeah. Eye Etu is a god. And the meaning of Etu, when you say, I am to me, I am comfortable. Okay. So I the guinea fowl is seen as a bird that has link with comfort. Yeah. So when they give you a clothing that yeah. bears the same name with Etu, yeah. it's saying in your new home you will enjoy comfort 
in all ramifications. The reason I'm asking is because I gave a presentation on this fabric okay. also. Yes, 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 I was at your kanga. Yeah, and the kanga is and the I same. Saw, I saw the kanga and I was telling my friend that this is the Yes. Mm. So, where, where is that from? South Africa? This is East Africa. East Africa? Yeah, and I, I've done research on this and it's, yeah, it's got a lot of interesting history and I'm very, I'm finding links all mm. over the place. Yes, mm. yes. Someone said in Brazil they have something called kanga, so I'm going now to follow that lead. And this one, in the field, my it's called etu, etu, guinea okay. fowl. So this is the way that's in which people it. tend to... Uh -huh, look at it now. That's a contemporary work. Bro. I think this couple, this one is amazing. This is, this is the soil and gold. So this is contemporary design now for me. Look at this one. The bride is in gold. And you see they are lying. It's uh, so the there is onjawu. What is onjawu? Okay. Onjawu is one with overflows, with only, only. That is a design just to bring aesthetics above the plain surface that we are used to. Hello. Simon. Just like if you compare the plain pattern denim, the jean, with the jean with floral designs, this is just a way of bringing aesthetics through design. For variety, so that I don't want plain one, I want pattern one. I don't I want the one with the overflow. The the the, the onja who has layer of twisted yarn passed through holes and now the layer is on the surface of the real weaving. It's a further way uh, a way of further uh, addition of aesthetics to the product. So these are Sonyan patterns. These are Sonyans in different designs. Tiny lines. Yeah. But um, um, well, one of you made the comment that this is dying out. I, I don't see it dying out though. Yeah. Actually, Actually I, I think I was one that said, but I didn't say it was dying out. I said it was becoming unpopular, particularly among the youth. You will see that. You said for their marriages. So yes. Any clothing you don't use as functional. Functional clothing means the clothing you wear on daily basis. If somebody comes in here with that outfit, what you can't celebrating. That's why you're improving on it now. But now look at her. We can't say why is she wearing this. Mm -hmm. She has improved on it. That's technology. That's technology. So what we are saying is that we should improve on it so that we can wear it every day. Because the old, we, the young will grow. Mm -hmm. The old people. Mm -hmm. So if that happens, and this group of weavers pass on, mm -hmm. who continues the production of yeah, fashion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if they you? produce, mm -hmm. like that. If, they, if a few people are still around to produce, who are the audience? Yeah. So we need to find a way of making it as popular as we have with the denim. Because researches have been carried out that prove that it is as strong, as, strong, as long wearing as the denim. The Chinese started from somewhere, and now you can't find a household where the father, mother, or any of the children will not have one product from jeans. Uh -huh. So let's see how we could do that for Ashofi. But, but, yeah. but actually, Ashofi lends itself to use like denim because it's already indigo dyed, it's already thick. I think the problem is not so much technology, the problem seems to be in terms of business. People are not invested. For instance, if, if somebody were to weave a shoke um, and dye it indigo and made them into a pants, into, into jeans pants, mm -hmm. people are going to buy it. Yes. It's just that nobody is producing those things. Yeah, um, right. uh, the, the problem is not the market. It's not the market. It's, 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 not, the market. it's not the market. It's, it's not the market. It's, 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 the, it's the production. production. It's, it's the production. And, and whether or not there are enough people to produce a mass the way you can market. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I've been trying to Just say. like you market How can the improve on it. I think the production the issue production. has to do with the loom issues. And that is the reason the white loom being introduced now. If it continues to spread as per acceptability, mm -hmm. then we can see in a few years to come so many young graduates having their weaving centers. So I can go to say, okay, I want my own in maroon, you want your own in this, and you want your own in this. And then if they must produce, 
and there is market for it, then why not? Yeah, if there's, if there's and we can sustain it. Are there market, ways right? of improving the, the method of production yes, to, no. make, to make them more effective? Yeah. That is why so we are now using a new that is as wide as 30 wider. inches wider. instead of 7 okay. inches. Okay. That so you improved of that. That is the one I used okay. for this. Story. Because the method of production, if it's clumsy, you know, exactly. with, this, with, this, with, this, with, with, with the introduction of this technological, thing, what, how would I put it? You know, the fastness, the space at which exactly. things move. Yeah. Everybody wants it the fast way. So who wants to come and sit down, you know, for, hours. for that clumsy okay. Okay. narrow street? And then with pains, you know, you have that ache and all that. But if you can do it and then yeah, that is why distribute the production. That is so why man's here, somebody man's here. And, and that is why production and marketing have to go hand in hand. Yes. If, you, if you take the good example of denim, yeah. most people believe that denim or the jeans is what I call American jeans. Historically, denim is a, is, is a, no, no, it's a French product. When you say denim, it means the name from name. Name is a city in France. But Americans took denim and ran with it because in the 19th century, they needed strong, sturdy fabric for dock workers and railway workers. Who loved the jeans so much that production in France couldn't keep up with the pace? America is a bigger place. Yes. If you've been to Europe, you see that it's also a smaller place. And so, even if the entire French industry focused on producing denim or jeans, it won't fit the market in America in three or four states. And that is how, ultimately, the U.S. or the United States of America took production of denim in their own hands and recently have shifted that to China because it's cheaper to produce mm -hmm. anything in China. China. But originally, denim is the name from France. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I share my teacher, World History Pass, and I tell my students, so, you know, you're talking about cultural diversity and intolerance and all one of your worries that women wear the burqa or the veil and so on, and you are mm -hmm. trying to protect the jeans. I said, if somebody came in here and said, okay, no more quote unquote American uniform, which today we believe is the jeans and t shirt. Mm -hmm. If somebody came in here and said, You are not going to wear jeans to school and t shirt, what will you do? They're like, Oh, we will not even stand for them, we'll be out on the streets. I'm like, Exactly. And so, by discrediting the veil and making so much noise about it, you are adding to the desire to resist whatever you're saying. Because even women who did not necessarily want to wear the veil have been sin to wear the veil because they want to make a statement about yeah. their identity yeah. and their culture. And so all those things come into play. So it depends on you know production and marketing and demand. And I think if we you know have faster looms and faster better looms. production facilities, yes. I think I think you know our own fabric can, can make a dent in the world economy. So the people collaborate yeah. um, in terms of the arts department and the technology department yes. in such a way that, um, for instance, we're talking of the narrow loom. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally, we, we have the wide loom already. Mm -hmm. But the innovation that I think can be made, actually, is in terms of finding a way to mechanize, mm -hmm. to the mechanize loom. the loom so that, so that there will be mass, mass production. <laughs> um, that is one thing. The other thing is, the hand woven one is also like art. Mm. It's an art. It's, it's yeah. an art form. It's an art and form. some people can continue to produce that mm -hmm. and that would be much more expensive. Oh, because sure. there are denims that are incredibly expensive. Yes. And then there are denims you can buy for fifteen bucks. For ten bucks. So yeah. there could be grades. But I, I would I would imagine that the are you in the art department at, at the end? Yeah, the art department. So if there, if there are ways to, to, to bring the two together, but not only that, um, to also uh, introduce the traditional weavers, bring the traditional weavers into the program and train them within the program so that they can actually go back into and the, the community and, and train them. Okay. Uh, questions, comments? <laughs> I think we're out of time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
were exhausted. Thank you. Thank you.